Matilda was in Anjou with her husband. And then up popped Stephen of Blois, who sailed from Normandy to England and claimed the crown. Stephen, who'd been saved from drowning on the white ship by an urgent need for a lavatory. He was the son of Henry's sister, a legitimate grandson of William the Conqueror. He'd also been the leading baron to swear fealty to Matilda as the heir apparent, but that was then, and this was now. He was 38 years old, backed by his very tough mother, and one of his brothers was the Bishop of Winchester with the keys to the royal treasury. The wife of the Count of Anjou was not a popular choice with the barons. Stephen was a Norman. Besides, he seemed a malleable sort of chap, brave enough and high-spirited. He was also generous, courteous and affable, and would probably do as he was told. Which was, of course, a recipe for disaster. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, When they saw that the king was a good-natured and kindly man, who inflicted no punishment, they committed all kinds of terrible crimes. All had done homage and sworn oaths of fealty, but none were kept. Meanwhile, Matilda was enraged and, of course, had her own supporters. England was moving rapidly to civil war. Stephen was insecure. He surrounded himself with people from near Blois, Flemings, which didn't go down well with the barons. He bought loyalty until it emptied the treasury and then began confiscating property so that he could pay his supporters. By the time Matilda landed to claim her throne in 1141, Stephen was trying to put down rebellion after rebellion. He was a brave, even ferocious fighter, but his support melted away and he was captured in a battle at Lincoln. Stephen was Matilda's prisoner. A church council declared that he was deposed by the manifest judgment of God and recognized Matilda as queen. Matilda proceeded to Westminster and was all set to be crowned. And then something went peculiarly wrong. Something that carries an extraordinarily clear message about the job of being the monarch of England. All Matilda's understanding of monarchy had been learned in Germany, where she'd been empress since she was 12 years old. She had been popular and successful there. After the emperor's death, when Henry I had brought her back to England, some German princes of the empire followed her to demand her back as their sovereign. But the sovereignty she had learned was absolute power. The emperor's will was law. The only possible higher law was the church. That was not how it worked in England. Even the conqueror had promised at his coronation to respect the laws of England. But Matilda flatly refused. She didn't need a coronation to be queen. In her view, she already was. She behaved imperiously, which might mean magnificently in German, but meant intolerably in English. And when the citizens of London petitioned her for a renewal of King Edward's laws, she not only refused to listen, but demanded a heavy tax from them. So they threw her out. Stephen was released from prison and resumed his battered kingship. In fact, he had a second coronation. Matilda roamed around the Midlands and the West Country fighting for a throne that she was entitled to, but could never have. In 1143, just before Christmas, Stephen finally had her trapped and starving in Oxford Castle. But unbelievably, Matilda and three knights got away. It had snowed, and that night, dressed entirely in white, they dropped over the walls to the frozen water below. They moved, silent and invisible, in the fresh snow, right through Stephen's camp. It was another five years before Matilda gave up and returned to Normandy. But she simply handed the torch to her son Henry, who came to England when he was 16 to carry on the struggle. And so the fighting went on, year after year, and the country was in effect without law and without government. As the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle said, castles were filled with devils and evil men. Christ and all his saints were asleep. Stephen naturally intended his own son Eustace to succeed him. But in 1153, both Eustace and Stephen's wife fell ill and died. Stephen had had enough. 
At the end of the year, Stephen and Henry rode together into London. There, the king proclaimed a new foundation for the kingdom. Henry was now his own adopted son and would be his successor as King of England. The next year, utterly worn out, King Stephen retired to his grave. <laughs>